Right, so this is a freaking treat right here. Uh, this is intimidating, and this is—I got a little backstory to this. This oh, I forgot to say, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> so, uh, interestingly enough, I always was like, man, I love this album. It's so good. And I'm like, who plays guitar in this? And it's you two. <laughs> this is Rob McNally, Kenny hey. Greenberg. They are two of uh, Nashville's great session guitar players. You've probably heard them on a million different songs and not known it. But today, they're going to break down one of their hits, a Kenny Chesney song, Till It's Gone, which is awesome. I think that uh, everybody else was booked that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, well, we're, <laughs> we're going to have them break down the parts. We're going to have them break down what kind of sounds they use, guitars, all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be kind of a whole educational experience. So even if you're not a country music fan or whatever, it's great if you're in a two guitar player band because it gives you some stuff to think about yeah. as guitar players to, to help distinguish yeah. parts how to play off of each other. How to overshadow each other. <laughs> um, Outplay. Just completely uh, compete. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you take the solo while I'm in there, you know, talking everybody into the lunch spot where, where exactly. I want to go for lunch. Exactly. Exactly. I think we went to Chili's that day. Did you? Well, it's the best Mexican food in the world. So I wanted to make sure we ate good. Exactly. Because yeah. you got to go in. I got the quesadilla with survivor sauce. That helped. Yeah. And a little grease on the fretboard. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's get into the parts. So let's break down the basic lick of the song. We're in the key of E, and it utilizes a lot of open ringing strings. So we're in the key of E, it's kind of an E major pentatonic kind of a lick. And so here's the lick. The lick is... So that's basically what the lick is. So you're playing on the B string, and, and the melody is... But if you just played the B string, it would sound, eh, it sounds kind of plain. But because we're in the key of E, you have this open E string ringing, so you can, if you lift your hand up and let the E, the, the open E ring, it sounds like... And you can add extra hits instead of just playing. You can play. And so you have this open sympathetic string that rings, and I think it makes it more exciting and it also adds tension as well. And then there's one more thing about playing this lick. It still feels a little bit plain to me. So rather than just going. I thought, wow, I could go. So I'm bending the, the string a little bit, and by bending the string, it gives it more emotion and tension, I think. You know, and I also like the kind of Indian sound of this right here. I think that sounds cool. So that's the way I played the leg. That's it. OK, 
Okay, so uh, what I what I played in the intro on this song was, you know, Kenny had this great lick, so uh, you need to find something to do that's not going to uh, interfere with that at all. So the simplest thing is just to big, play big old diamonds, you know, in the intro. And I, I used the overdrive pedal into a, you know, a Fender Bassman head or whatever, and uh, just played... And I kept it diamonds, you know, because, uh, you know, with acoustic guitars creating all the syncopation behind it and all that, you know, it, it didn't feel like uh, doing this, you know, was needed. It felt like that would step on uh, the other, on Kenny's territory, you know, sonically. So, that's all the intro is. E, A, and another thing that I did was, you know, it took the third out of the chord, the E chord did not play any thirds. I just kind of muted that with uh, the, the side of my ring finger so that uh, it's all just just root and fifth all the way across. And the same thing on the A chord. I mute that B string with the side of my finger so I don't have that third hanging out. Just makes it a little more muscular and direct sounding and punchier I think. So that's the intro. Okay, so I'm going to break down the verse of the song. And here's what the chords are. The chords are... It's an E chord. And then it's just a slightly altered E chord where the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth is here. So the first chord is that. Then you just move this finger down a fret. And then the third chord is. You're moving down one more fret. And then the last one is. So you really, it's, it's all over, it's all an E chord with these altered notes in it. So it's. So these two things. That all always stays the same. And, and that goes to there. Then, but I have to move this finger over to here so I can get over to that fret. It's just like a it's like a second position E bar chord, but you're just playing those notes. But then I want to have a rhythm to it because there's a beat to the song, so I play it like. Three, four. And you'll notice I have a delay on, and the tempo of the song is 87. So I've got a delay set for quarter notes at 87, and they're kind of dark sounding delay, so you have. And I'm playing a little bit slower than that than that delay, but it's um, so if I play the delay really helps me kind of dance my way through the part. It kind of makes it swing really nicely, and it it just makes it sound cool. So, okay, so then, then we get to the verse, um, I used a, a delay pedal uh, with a lo-fi setting. Um, I, I used the Strymon Timeline, but there are plenty of delays out there that do a lo-fi delay that you can use. And, and the, you know, the tempo of the song said uh, 87, so I set the delay time to 16th notes. So, now, whenever I do delay times to really short, like, 16th note delay times, I usually back off the tempo just a little bit because, to me, it feels like if it's right on the tempo with 16th notes, it starts to feel like it's rushing or something. I, I can kind of play... Uh, I just like it when the delay is laid back a little bit, and I mixed it up enough to where it sounds like I'm playing 
as loud as what I'm playing. So that so here's the part without the delay. So in the verse, I just. Just droning octaves across there on uh, the second fret on the D string and then the fifth fret on the B string so it's just it's just two E notes just kind of now I add this delay in here and that's all it is it's just 16th note with one repeat and uh, just static across that verse, you know, and it works over all those chords. So uh, it's just kind of an interesting sonic thing to do back there. And that's that's what we did. Now we're going to break down the chorus of this song now. And um, you know, the thing about this song is, it's really only two chords. It's an E chord and an A chord, pretty much. There's a little inversion thing in the verse, but it's really a two chord song. So the intro and the chorus are really the same thing. So, but in the intro, there's no signature lick because the artist is singing. So really, it's just two chords. And so, and there's a lot of words in the chorus. Like there's not a lot of holes in the chorus. Like, I'm gonna He's moving um, lyrically pretty strongly, so all we can really do is play ones and fours. So, Rob, let's show if we just play just the ones and fours without embellishing or pushing, yeah. it would sound like this. Yeah. Like, one, two, three, four. Kind of boring, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really so yeah. exciting. So we, together sitting in our chairs, you know, the whole band actually came up with, well, let's push the second chord and the sixth chord. And pushing means we play it a little ahead of the beat. We anticipate the second chord because that goes, that matches the words that he's singing. The phrasing, he pushes his second phrase. So we decided to do that to bring some excitement to the chorus so we didn't sound like, it didn't sound quite so boring. So if we push the second chord, that's gonna sound like yeah. one, two, three, four. And we push it again on the next one again. Push it right here. Add some, add some power to the song, yeah. but they're still kind of boring. So then we thought, well, there's a little space in the middle of it, and I'll put a little lick in there, and we'll also, and then there's some pushes on the chords, Rob. You yeah, want to yeah. talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like on the on the like the first bar, uh, like we we started just naturally doing it. Really, I mean, yeah. just like uh, hitting, emphasizing beat two with the high strings, like you know. You know, we just kind of started doing that, I think, and, and it, it helped uh, jump the excitement up a little bit, you know. Yeah, and, um, then, and then we also, and then I put a lick in, in the middle of it, where there's a little space where right in the middle of bar four where he stops singing for a minute and nothing happens, so I thought, well, I'm just going to slide a little bit of lick in there. So let's play with the pushes and... Um, Let's play with the pushes and, and, and I'll play the lick as well. Okay. One. Like four bars? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so when I went up high on the last chord, because it's getting ready to go into the turnaround and the drummer's going to go ba 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 da ba, instead of just playing a four chord there, I played it, which I always think of like as the Pete Townsend chord. 
you know that that thing so it's a it's like a bar chord of an a chord but i'm really just hitting that then muting that hitting that and which i think is a great sounding power chord and to me it's the who you know so you go it's exciting sounding to me so anyway so that's how we took a really boring chorus and fixed it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to play the solo section. We'll just do two, two bars count. One, two, three. It's kind of Almond brothers ish a little bit or something. So I've decided to play where the opening phrase is. And that's just some, um, it's on the, on the, on the B string. It's kind of like, I, I, I like that Mick Ronson kind of slow vib vibrato. So it's, you know. So, it's really kind of a dumb guy solo. It's not like really like it's, you know, it's not a pyrotechnical anything at all. I just played it going down. So it's... And this is a cool thing, because if you bend there, it's really that note. So the first phrase is... Then I'm just sort of playing that over and over again. I'm not really thinking about what I'm playing. I'm just kind of going for it. And I'm doing all downstrokes because the band's all in the room. You know, in Nashville, we all play in the room together a lot. So the band's in the room, the drums are raging, the shit's happening, everything's going on at the same time. So I just, I'm playing really hard all downstrokes. Kind of all kind of Dickie Betts, kind of, you know. Then to end the solo, I thought I would go up an octave, so I, w I went up to... Which to me, once again, is kind of a David Bowie, Mick Ronson, Spiders from Mars kind of lick, you know. But it's really... The guy that first did this was B.B. King. It's the... It's really yeah. the B.B. Uh, King lake that all us white guys tried to um, appropriate. So. And then... So it's the same lick twice. Gentlemen, thank you. That was yeah. freaking amazing. I'm, I'm a little intimidated. But it's just like it's. I don't know. I don't know. You, you're sitting in that chair. I know. I feel important. Are. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Yeah. Feels important. But anyways, I'm gonna leave the links for each of their channels below. They each are gonna have some YouTube channels and some stuff coming. I hear. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And you break down yeah. sounds, how to play parts. Yeah. Sweet. So I can just come to your guys' house and be like, how did that, how did that song go? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Sweet. All right, so make sure you check out their channels. Put them in the description box below the video. Thanks for watching.